Hi there trailer owners. Today we're going to be showing you how to replace or add drum brake assemblies to your trailer. Drum brake assemblies are one of the things that you hope you never have to replace, but if you have bearing failure or really bad brake failure where your shoes, the material is just completely gone, the drum could be completely damaged uh, to the point where you can't reuse it and you just need to replace it. Or like my example here, this is my personal trailer. I didn't have brakes at all in this trailer and I wanted to add brakes to it to give me uh, more safe hauling when I'm putting this trailer towards its maximum load. And this is a really easy and quick way for me to get drum brakes installed. This is a pre-greased unit that has all the bearings and everything already greased and everything inside. So I just had to install the brake assemblies and then slide the drum on there. And man, so fast. If you were trying to put this stuff together, it would easily have been two to three times the amount of time. It also minimizes how much parts and stuff I need to figure out when I'm doing this. Uh, if you're repairing your assemblies at home or adding them, um, the most common things you need to check for are your bearings and you need to make sure that your bolt pattern and stuff is right. So with a kit like this, we're gonna get, with uh, the drum here, we get our bearings already installed. So we just had to take one assembly apart and just verify that that bearing was the appropriate size for our trailer. We do offer these drums in different sizes with different bearings so you can verify that you're getting the appropriate one. We needed to check our bolt pattern here because uh, we wanted to make sure that our old rims would be able to fit on here. Um, my trailer is a little bit obscure being a five on five on a 3,500 pound axle. The most common is gonna be a five on four and a half, but it's where you wanna check it. If I would've just went with the most common and put the five on four and a half on here, I would've needed all new rims to be able to uh, get this back up. So double check those things. You do get new lug nuts, which is also nice. My, uh, my old setup, I've had a couple that were um, just got rusted and busted over the years, so I'm fixing this issue along the way. And again, I'm not just really think about um, ordering each of these pieces individually. You know, make sure you get your, your bearings and all that stuff in your cart. All you gotta do is just look at this drum assembly, just check some numbers and make sure your sizes are right, and you get pretty much everything in the whole package right here. Cap, lugs, bearings, already greased for you, seals already pre-installed. So it does save you a lot of time. Now, if you're wanting to add all this stuff like we are. We are gonna have videos on the uh, brake assemblies as well as the wiring and hardware components so that way you can follow along with us and get your trailer fully set up like this if you're going from just a bare setup. For my utility trailer here, we uh, 3,500 pound axle, so we put the 10 inch version on here and I just went with the black powder coat version because um, I just use this mainly for hauling around my tractor or uh, just kind of hauling some things around. But if this was a boat trailer or if I lived in an area with high corrosion like up north uh, or near the coast, I would have put the galvanized version on, which you can get here at E-Trailer. Um, you can save yourself a little bit of money with the black powder coat, but if you live in those highly corrosive areas, you would actually be saving yourself some money with the galvanized version because uh, this just wouldn't last as long as the galvanized in those highly corrosive areas. So now we've taken a look at some of the features of our drum here. If you follow along with us, we'll show you how to get that old hub off of there and get our new ones installed. We'll begin our installation here with our trailer. Now I did put some jacks underneath both the front and back corner to lift up this side. And on the opposite side, I do have wheel chocks on the wheels over there on the other side to prevent the trailer from being able to roll. We'll tackle one side at a time. So we got it up high enough that we can remove both the wheels on this side so we can get this done. Now this kit's gonna be great for either repairing a damaged or no longer working brake assembly, but it's also good for adding brakes. This here's my personal trailer and it doesn't have brakes on it. I've got kind of an older truck and I load this trailer up pretty close to the max when, when I need to. And it does get a little sketchy at times driving it with my truck. So I'm gonna get some brakes on here so I feel more comfortable, feel like I can drive it a more appropriate highway speed. I'm that guy that's probably doing 55 on the highway when I got this thing heavily loaded. So we're gonna take care of that today. Um, so we are gonna be actually running wires and doing the whole shebang. So we'll be showing you all that. But if you're just doing a replacement to repair your parts, you can follow along with us and all the information pretty much applies as well. So we'll start by getting our wheels off here. Now I did get it jacked up and you can see our wheels are moving. If you don't have a powerful impact, you would wanna make sure that you take each one of these nuts and crack them loose before you lift your trailer up. Otherwise you're gonna have a hard time getting those off. If you got a strong enough impact though, you can just lift it up and zip those right off of there. So we'll get our wheels removed by removing all of these. Um, 
The lug nuts do vary in size. Mine are a 13 16 in size, but they could probably be anywhere between a three quarter up to a seven eighths in most cases for, uh, for this size of trailer. Now that we've got both the wheels removed, we need to get our hubs off of here. Now, if you're doing this at home and you're doing a repair, you're gonna have a, probably a drum assembly on there and not just a hub. It's gonna be similar. Your drum should have your studs and stuff on it. It's just gonna be that bigger drum assembly. You'll remove your hub and your drum the same way by pulling our cap off here in the middle. So we're gonna knock the cap off of there. Just kinda give it a little tap with your hammer. Just like that, you can see it's working itself loose. Once you get it uh, popped out, you can then switch to a screwdriver to pop that off of there. I do have a rag laid out here below so we can set all of our parts and tools on it because this is full of grease and you can get a big mess really fast uh, by spreading that grease around. So I highly recommend doing this. Now inside of our assembly here, we should have a cotter pin and there's the pin there. The other sides of the pin here will need to be bent straight. So there's one of the legs. So we need to bend that straight. There's another one here bend this one straight as well and then after we've got those bent we can pull our cotter pin out here sometimes it's uh, you got to work it a little bit depending on how it was bent when it was pushed in there it can be a little more difficult to remove a lot of times you have a, a loop here at the top so if you can get that up high enough you can get your screwdriver or pliers or something in there in that loop and use that to pull your cotter pin through. Or you may break your cotter pin. That does happen sometimes as well. These are um, older. I haven't replaced uh, the bearings in here in some years. So we'll just pull those through. If they break, they come out a lot easier. You can buy replacement cotter pins here at E-Trailer. They don't come with your brakes, so it is something you would want to add. And it's something I would honestly recommend just adding anyway. They're a cheap component and it's kind of a safety mechanism that holds this nut in place. So it's a pretty important component. So putting a new one on there is uh, just a good idea anyway. Our nut here then, we'll just remove. It shouldn't be that tight. I'm removing it with channel locks here um, just to prevent a bunch of mess from occurring. So we're just threading that off of there. All right. Now that our nut is removed from there, the whole hub will slide off. The outer bearing though is just kind of sitting in there right now and there's a washer behind the outer bearing. We're gonna be reusing that washer but the rest of the parts we're gonna be replacing. So I'm gonna stick my screwdriver up here, grab my hub, and again, if you got a drum, you can do this the same way and slide that out. Your bearing, you can get the drop down on your screwdriver. We can set that down on our napkin and then pull our whole assembly off now whether it's your drum or just your hub here, and then set that down as well. We just went through the same thing for the uh, rear axle here since we're putting brakes on both. Go ahead and clean up all the grease that's on here. We wanna get this nice and clean um, because if you don't know what type of grease that was on here before, um, when you go to put new grease on it, if you're using a different brand of grease, it is possible that they could have slightly different chemical compositions that may not be compatible with one another and may cause it to break down prematurely. So we're just gonna get all this cleaned off here and just go with, with all new grease so we know that it's gonna be all compatible. We'll get our other one cleaned up the same way. And then we can start getting our brakes put on. I recommend getting the grease out of the way first because you also don't wanna get any of this grease on your shoes, your pads there or anything for your brake assemblies, that's just gonna cause them to not function as well as they should. If you're adding brakes to your trailer, uh, just go ahead and put those on now. They'll simply slide into place and then you'll use hardware that doesn't come included with. So if you're adding them, you don't have any, but you can get hardware here at E-Trailer. Uh, we got a little package for those. So now I've already checked, so I know what size uh, bearings and things I need. Those do come included with your pre-grease assembly there. But if you don't know, it's definitely important to double check and make sure. So you can disassemble one of your uh, hub assemblies, take that outer bearing out and see what number you've got on there. I already went ahead and pulled it out of the hub. This is the bearing that should have slid out on your screwdriver when you were taking it out. Got it in a little rag here, clean off the surfaces. Your numbers can be either on the inside or outside surface of the bearing. So ours is uh, gonna be on the smaller tapered side, but it could be on the other side there. But here we've got our number, it's an 
L44649. So that number matches with the outer bearing for the number that comes in our kit here. So we know we should be good to go at this point. We know it's a 3,500 pound axle. We know our bearing numbers match there. So um, the only other thing that potentially could be different is the inner seal here. Sometimes there are slightly different sizes for the inner seal, uh, but the most common size is what's gonna be included in your kit here. Um, so you can refer to that. You can mic your diameter there and compare that with what's on the website if you're wanting to verify, but uh, the, the most common size is what you're gonna have here. So we're pretty confident based on this outer number that we should be good to go there. So here we've got our new drum assembly. Just wanted to cover a few things on it before we install it. Uh, you can see here that it is a pre-greased and pre-assembled unit. So this is gonna drastically reduce the amount of time and mess that you're gonna make at home because all the work's basically done for you. When you get this kit here, you pretty much just open it up, slide it on and put your nut back on and you're good to go. There is a cap in there that holds the grease in place. So we'll go ahead and pull this off now. This is for the inside. Uh, this is where the grease seal is located. The bearing is already inside there. That's your inner bearing and it's already inserted. You can see it's already pre-greased and they did a great job on this. Uh, I've installed a few of these pre-greased kits before and this is my own trailer that I'm working on here. Normally I would uh, want to pack my own bearings and things like that because I want to make sure everything's right when I'm working on my own stuff. But after having installed these a few times, I've got a lot of confidence in their, their abilities to do so. So I figure I might as well save myself some time and, uh, and just utilize what's done here. So after we got that cap removed, we will take a quick look here at the surfaces because if you are, unlike me where I'm adding brakes to a trailer, if you're just buying these as replacements to repair some damaged components, maybe you're replacing the shoes and you got the drum off, things you wanna look for here on the inside. This is the surface where the shoes ride, right here. So check and look for scoring and pitting and cracking in this area. You wanna just double check that. If you've got scoring that's real heavy uh, or cracking, things like that, you can have premature failure, your drum here. And it also causes premature wear on our pads because it's gonna wear those grooves and things into it. Cracks and stuff are gonna help uh, prematurely wear the pads. And then you also wanna check for out of round. So you wanna measure the distance across in multiple locations. And when you're measuring across, the largest number you get is, will tell you that you're measuring uh, completely in a straight line all the way across. And after you measure it one direction, do it across the other way, maybe do an X after that. And all your numbers should be relatively the same, pretty close to one another. Uh, if they are not the same number, that means that your drum is not round and you're gonna have reduced braking performance if you have an out-of-round drum. It's gonna prematurely wear your components as well if you have an out-of-round drum. So it's important that you have a round one. Those are things to check for. The other thing to look for is this surface here on the inside. This surface is where your electric brake magnet will ride when it's activated. So if you've got heavy scoring and grooved or damaged areas here, and you're replacing your brake assembly over there, that new magnet's just gonna get chewed up if you got a damaged and chewed up surface there. So just check all those things. If all that stuff looks good there, then your drum is probably okay. The only thing left that you really need to check is your old bearings. Um, so check those on your drum assembly. You wanna check those, because if your bearings have come apart or if they're heavily pitted, uh, you may have damage on the inside here where those ride as well, and you would wanna address that. But if everything else looks good, then you're fine to reuse your drum assembly. So we're gonna go ahead and get this guy installed now that we've taken a look at a few things on the inside. This cap here has your outer bearing in it and there is no seal or anything that holds the outer bearing in place. So once you pull this cap off, that bearing can fall out of there. So just keep that in mind. We're gonna be sliding it onto our assembly here. We wanna make sure that our seal located there that we don't nick it on any of the surfaces there or any of the threads. We don't wanna damage that seal. So try to go nice and straight in place, straight out, and you can actually just have your uh, axle push that cap out if you want, just like that, just kind of pushes it out. And then we can take that off of there. I'm just gonna put that in my old hub. And now we do need to reuse a couple of the parts from our old assembly. You'll have your cotter pin, your nut, and your washer. 
Now the washer on mine stuck with the nut, but it's not uncommon for the washer to stick with the bearing. So just check and see which surface it's stuck to. Um, we're gonna get the old grease off of here. We don't want to contaminate our new grease with the old grease because if they are not the same manufacturer, they could potentially have slightly different chemical compositions that may not be compatible with one another. So get all that old grease off of there because incompatible chemicals could potentially cause it to break down and not provide adequate lubrication. So there we go, we get that cleaned up. That's just gonna slide in place there into our assembly. And we'll clean up our nut. That's gonna slide on next. And then we'll thread that on down. Now, when you're installing the nut and setting it to the normal position, it's actually not gonna be that tight once you've got it adjusted. But what we're gonna do is we are gonna slightly over tighten it in the beginning here to ensure that our drum is fully seated. And then we'll just back it off from there and adjust it appropriately. So we're getting all that grease out of there. You can have just a little bit left behind, but we wanna get the majority of that off of there, of that old grease. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now we'll just thread that in place there. And I'm gonna use my channel locks once I get a little closer here because some grease is gonna to start to push out. And we're trying to minimize the mess that we're gonna make here. And also with our channel locks, we can get it a little bit tighter to ensure that we do get it all the way seated. So that's already a little bit tighter than what you would normally want it, but we're gonna just keep going just a little bit there and then back it off. We know we're now fully seated, so I should back off. And the position where we want it to be adjusted, where we have basically no play, but we're not over tightening it, is right just up until it butts up there. So I'm doing it by hand. It's butted up to it right there. That should get rid of all of our play. So that is pretty close to where we want it to be. So now we just need to insert our cotter pin. So we're gonna look for our location where our cotter pin inserts. And it's not uncommon that one of these pieces here is covering up the hole. So you may need to slightly adjust it in one direction to be able to insert your cotter pin. Get it roughly where that cotter pin hole is. You can either loosen or tighten, it's up to you. I usually d choose depending on where the tab is. So this tab's a little bit towards uh, the looser side already. I can kind of barely get it in the hole. So I'm gonna go with loosening it just a little bit since it's so close that direction. If it was the other way where um, the hole was very close to the tightening position, I would just tighten it a little bit. So we'll slide our cotter pin in there. And then we just need to bend the cotter pin over. So I'll hold it in place. So we'll switch to our needle nose there for that. Grab the ends there. And just twist those back. We do want to make sure we got it kind of pushed down flat a little bit here. Because um, the caps, when you go to reinstall, if they're sticking straight out, it can prevent that cap from wanting to insert all the way. Yeah. But now that we've got that done, our assembly is ready for the cap to be installed. And you can purchase these assemblies in two different versions as far as the cap there. You can get the regular version, which you'll receive a cap like this. Um, and there's also the Easy Lube version, which you'll receive a cap like this. Now, I don't have Easy Lube axles on my trailer, but I went ahead and opted for these because I like to have the rubber cap there just for doing a quick visual so I can look inside the cap, see if, uh, see if I see discoloration like brown coloring, like water's maybe gotten in there. Um, so I like to have this style even if I don't have an Easy Lube. So I'm gonna put those on, but you can save yourself an extra you know, couple of dollars by getting this style if, uh, if you don't have the Easy Lube and don't need it. But I want this style, so I'm gonna put this one on. And then we're just gonna tap this in place with our hammer. And we're really not hitting that hard on that cap. You can actually ding, uh, ding and dent these up pretty easily. Uh, you can already see that I've got a couple of little tiny flat spots on there, but nothing that's too unsightly. So we can wipe off any excess grease we've got there. And at this point, we've got our 
drum installed on there. I always like to give it a spin to feel how the adjustment is on the brakes. I'm probably gonna put a, a click or two in it to give me, myself just a little bit more drag on the brakes. These are auto adjusting brakes that we installed, but uh, I always like to set up the initial uh, first time to just make sure everything's working properly there. Once you've got them all installed, you do wanna check their operation to make sure they're working so we can see it spinning. We do have an assistant up front who's got our test box that'll activate it. If you're doing this at home, you can plug in your truck and have somebody activate the manual slider on your brake controller. So if you wouldn't mind, Henry, go ahead and hit the button and boom, it stops. That looks good there. Go ahead and hit the button again, Henry, and we'll check the back one. And that one stops as well. Of course, when we do our other side and do our installation over there, we will wanna verify that those work as well before we put our trailer into service. The only thing that's really left is to just double check that adjustment on here and adjust it if you want to. Again, if you don't want to, you could just leave it. It is automatically adjusting. So just driving your trailer around, you could drive it, hit the brakes, back up, hit the brakes, um, and then it should automatically adjust it there. But I like to just know before I even take my trailer out that I've got it set up right and I'll let the adjuster go from there. So the uh, there's your adjustment caps here for accessing your adjuster. On the driver's side one here, we want the cap towards the rear of the trailer. It may be the front one on the passenger side, but over here we want this one. So just take your flat bladed screwdriver and just get behind the cap and pop it out of there. It's just kind of a rubberized, kind of a plasticky rubber material. And now inside this hole, you will have a wheel that has a bunch of teeth on it and we can actually adjust our brakes using that little wheel. So inside the hole here, there you can see the automatic adjuster. It's this, uh, the chrome piece there with the little bar. It's hard to see it because it's so dark because it's black uh, material, it's dark in there and it's also painted black as well, your little adjusting star wheel. But we can use our screwdriver here to turn the wheel. And this will change the distance here at the bottom between our shoes and you can use it to either screw it outward bringing the shoes closer to the inside of the drum or screw it inward bringing the shoes further away um, ideally again we want to try to get them to be pretty close so we could use a little bit more than what we've got there so we're actually going to adjust it to be increase so here's uh, one of the other brake assemblies. This is the rear axle one. We have the drum off of this one so you can see. This is the adjustment star wheel here. This is the metal arm that is your auto adjuster that will automatically click to adjust it to spread it outward. And this is the access hole so you can see my screwdriver going in here. And then you can see this is how where you can kind of just adjust the wheel as necessary, whether you're wanting to go less like that or more um, the other direction. So, but you do not want to adjust this, like we're just showing you here for an example. You don't want to adjust it without your drum on there, because uh, you could easily be pushing these off to the side. Some of your hardware could potentially pop off of there. So it's really important you do have the drum on there. And then with the drum on there, you can also check to see how much drag you have. If you're adjusting it like this, you can't see and verify how much drag you got. Um, this is just for visual purposes so you guys can see where that adjuster wheel is. So now we've tested our brakes, we know they work, we've adjusted them, everything's looking good there. All that's left at this point is to reinstall your wheels and torque them down. You do get new lug nuts with your assemblies here. They are installed backwards, so when you take them off of there, make sure you put the tapered edge inward like this uh, to appropriately install your wheels and then torque your wheels to the manufacturer's specifications. And that completes our installation of e-trailers pre-greased brake drum on our utility trailer here.